this reinforces the public school training of all of us <laughs> that everybody wants to be backbenchers. <clears throat> so Mr. Zelik will be here in a, sh a very short time. <clears throat> it's a bit of a compressed program uh, because of various uh, pulls and pressures of the last week of our president. So we will try to uh, stay true to the timing. I think we'll start five minutes late, but we intend to finish by 11, which would also include signing of the MOUs. And uh, <coughs> I went and hacked my speech down from 20 minutes to four minutes. <laughs> so, Mr. Minister, please. Uh, we'll have the speeches, and then I would request the two gentlemen uh, on both sides, to the honorable ministers on both sides of uh, Mr. Zelik, to move uh, for the signing of the MOU. There'll be two MOUs that would be signed, one with the Clemson University on open park grid, and one with the Confederation of Indian Industry uh, with uh, regard to the setting up of the Wildlife Business Councils, uh, that, that an initiative that Mr. Zelik has started. <coughs> Andrew, can you get some water, please? <coughs> whatever, coffee, water, whatever. I'll be the master of ceremony, which itself, according to my staff, is a challenge. So if I kind of get about talking about other things, kindly exercise <laughs> discipline on me. The hall is looking very full now. <clears throat> I think this is, this is true about the flexibility concept of the Preston. Uh, please come in and sit down. <clears throat> Mr. Zelig will be here in a minute. I'm very grateful for EAP Director Mr. Vijay Jagannathan to be here because this initiative has started with East Asia. <clears throat> Mr. The Under Secretary of State, Mr. Robert Homerts, is in a meeting with the Secretary, so he'll be 10 minutes late. <clears throat> I think the Secretary is evidently discussing tigers uh, in Asia, so that'll be interesting. When he comes back, he'll talk about it. We have Karin here, the Vice President of IFC, who's leading the, the private sector part of our initiative. <clears throat> I must congratulate the World Bank staff to be here, in spite of a very fine morning outside. So it's, it's truly gratifying to see Valerie walking in. <coughs> Almost on time. <coughs> uh, would you please sit down now? Really, we want to start in the next one minute as soon as Mr. Zelik is here. I'm particularly grateful for Mr. Clough to be here, who's always supported us. And the partnership with the Smithsonian is truly something very special, as well as with IFO, Fred. I'm trying to cut down my inaugural part of it. <laughs> by saying it just now. Of course, the honorable ministers are here. Rachel, would you please come up? Our vice. So, are you coming at 11? Okay. Our vice president for Sustainable Development Network, who has just returned from Rio. She is just giving us support from behind to this whole event. 
so I must thank you for it. She has to go and attend a board meeting, uh, which was not intentionally set. So she's here, and she would, as soon as that meeting is over. But Rachel just wanted to let you know that the CII is here, the Confederation of Indian Industry, signing the MOU with us, and as well as Clemson and others. <coughs> Mr. Zelik should be on his way. <coughs> there is a slight change in the program. Mr. Bruno Leport, who is the acting vice president for WBI, he'll be deli delivering the closing remarks. <coughs> <coughs> So please come up, please sit down. Thank you for coming. This event is being uh, photographed. Actually, we are creating a movie uh, around it, which will be sent to you. <coughs> Andre? Andre? Where are the MOUs? I'm also very grateful to the presence of the legal department who have continued to give us all the support. So Zelig is here. Please. Yes. Good morning. With your permission, we'll start. Mr. Zelik, Honorable Ministers from Bangladesh and Bhutan. The Under Secretary is on his way, Mr. Homerts, Vice Minister from Vietnam, Secretary Mr. Clough, Dr. Helms, Ms. Carr, His Ex Their Excellencies, the Ambassadors, Executive Directors, managing directors, vice presidents, CEOs, heads of international NGOs, colleagues, and friends. We are here today to mark the fourth anniversary of the launch of the Global Tiger Initiative in June 2008 at the National Zoo. It is my privilege to recognize the World Bank's founding GTI partners, the Global Environment Facility, and the Smithsonian Institution. We are also releasing the results of the first stock taking of implementation of the Global Tiger Recovery Program in the first implementation report. Bangladesh, Bhutan, Vietnam represented here today by honorable ministers and all of the Tiger Range countries can be proud of what they have accomplished towards furthering the goal of stabilizing and then doubling the numbers of wild tigers by 2022. I would like to recognize Dr. Yadav from the National Tiger Conservation Authority of India. There is something almost mystical about tigers that inspires this devotion as it has inspired poets and painters and all people from time immemorial. And even the earliest wisdom and understood what we understand today. In the words of the ancient Hindu text, the Mahabharata, the tiger perishes without forest and the forest perishes without its tigers. I'm going to talk about the Global Tiger Recovery Program the mechanism or the framework around which the entire effort is directed. The GTRP implementation highlights, this is reflected in one of the most significant achievements of GTRP implementation. To protect more forest habitats, new tiger protected areas were created in India, Myanmar and Nepal, and more are in process in India, Russia and others. Eight Tiger Range countries outlined measures for addressing habitat fragmentation, including implementing the principles of smart green infrastructure that we have been promoting. In other highlights, 10 new or amended laws or national regulations affecting tiger conservation were adopted or presented for approval in the Tiger Range countries, including Bangladesh, Myanmar, Russia, and Vietnam. In the effort to combat Growing wildlife crime, the SARC countries joined to form the South Asia Wildlife Enforcement Network, a counterpart to ASEAN WEN. All of the Tiger Range countries, including Bangladesh, India, Russia, and Vietnam, signed bilateral MOUs 
or made other arrangements to enhance cooperation in fighting transboundary trafficking in tiger and other endangered wildlife. And with support from USAID, the World Bank and others, Interpol and the ICWIC, International Consortium for Combating Wildlife Crime Partnership, brought together police and custom officials from all the Tiger Range countries to enlist their great, greater participation in stopping wildlife crime. Led by the Smithsonian with partners at the w, WBI, Wildlife WWF and WCS, more than 800 senior executives and park level management staff received training, most in law enforcement, monitoring programs designed to reduce poaching and habitat encroachment. I'm also very pleased to report that 60% of the incremental funding, which was uh, to the tune of $350 million for five years, uh, indicated at the Global Tiger Recovery Program in St. Petersburg, that funding needed for GTRP implementation uh, in the first five years has been secured. Looking forward, in applauding these accomplishments, however, we should not be lulled into believing that all is well. We have a very long way to go, but we do know, do know where we are going and what we must do to get there. We will stabilize and recover tigers if poachers are stopped in their tracks. But with poaching surging, a top priority in the next year must be to fully st staff protected areas and highly trained and well-equipped guards able to conduct rigorous law enforcement monitoring. I'm grateful that WWF and WCS and our IFO are advancing this goal. Another priority is for ICWIC partners to sharpen their impact through full integration with country law enforcement operations to increase the interdictions of wildlife traffickers. And expanded capacity building efforts with WBI, the Smithsonian new partners, Clemson University, and others are needed to build strong institutions for conservation in the TRCs. We will stabilize and recover tigers if we safeguard the integrity of tiger conservation landscape from unplanned infrastructure and resource extraction in these habitats. So another top priority is using smart green infrastructure principles to create master plans, spatial land use, and investment plans for tiger conservation landscapes. Working with new partners in the private sector, such as the Confederation of Indian Industry, is also essential to develop guidelines to make roads, mines, pipelines, tourism, and hydropower wildlife friendly. To advance this, we will work with the IFC to build the Wildlife Business Council beyond India to other key Asian hubs. We will stabilize and recover tigers if local communities are involved and rewarded for conserving tigers and habitats. As a priority, parks must be developed as engines of economic growth to benefit local communities through green growth models for supplementing livelihood. We will stabilize and recover tigers if we maintain political will at the highest level, the tiger range countries, ministers who are championing the GTI, and their counterparts in the US, UK, and elsewhere, as well as World Bank senior management in the regions and operations are critical to this, and we look forward to your continued support. We must also enlist youth and young professionals, like the students here today from Sidwell Friends School and Clemson University, in building awareness of the value of wildlife and wilderness, so future generations can carry on with their efforts. Because even when we succeed in stabilizing and recovering tigers, these great predators will remain dependent on people for protection. I've been following the proceedings of Rio 20 and recently reviewed the CBD strategic plan. The TRCs and the GTI partners are already implementing through the GTRP most of the actions outlined in the strategic plan. This makes the GTI an excellent model for effectively and measurably implementing the biodiversity targets, and it is heartening that others are seeking to emulate our efforts. For this, all of you are to be congratulated. Your hard work and commitment is incredible. Finally, I salute the vision of Mr. Zelik whose conviction that people and wildlife can and must pro prosper together guides all that the GTI does. He will long be recognized as a conservation hero. I'm also deeply grateful for the opportunity he gave me to pursue my passion for protecting tigers and the wilderness in which they live. Thank you very much. May I now request uh, Karin to say a few words on behalf of IFC. Thank you, Keshev. Distinguished guests, ministers, ambassadors, President Zelik, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted and honored to be here with all of you today representing IFC. As many of you will know, we're the part of the World Bank Group that focuses on private sector development in emerging markets. Our goal is to find and support private sector solutions to development challenges. And I applaud the impressive accomplishments so far of the Tiger Range countries and the Global Tiger Initiative, which Keshev has outlined just now. 
We're all here to continue finding ways to make the Global Tiger Initiative a success on the ground. And I'd like to make two brief points. First, IFC's extensive experience working with the private sector in emerging markets has shown that it is in firm's best business interest to protect the planet and help people while at the same time growing profits. This experience, and that's my second point, can be applied toward protecting tigers and the biodiversity needed to support tigers, and IFC has plans for that. So first, IFC's experience in combining business success with conserving wildlife for the future. IFC requires that all of our private sector compliance, all of our private sector clients comply with our environmental and social policies and guidelines, which include solid provisions to protect natural habitats. At the start, some clients find these standards tough and even expensive to comply with. However, based on client surveys after we've dispersed our loans, we know that IFC's performance standards on which the globally recognized equator principles for project finance are modeled have benefited our private sector clients. They help firms manage national, natural resources more efficiently, save costs, increase profits, and help businesses to better manage their companies overall. Also, since the 1990s, with support from the Global Environment Facility and our own funds, IFC has invested in innovative businesses where nature preservation is the main asset. For example, we've engaged in public-private partnerships in Indonesia with the Komodo National Park and in South Africa's Kruger National Park. IFC helped develop tourism concessions between government and tourism operators while taking into account the interests of the local communities and civil society. These projects are providing jobs and social services. And also the government is able to use the tourism fees for park maintenance and management, helping to reduce the reliance on government budgets. Let me touch on my second point. Since preserving natural habitat makes business sense, what then has IFC started to do, and what are we hoping to do in the future with the Global Tiger Initiative? In partnership with the World Bank and governments, IFC is ready to work with industry associations and conservation stakeholders to convene wildlife business councils, as Keshev mentioned. And these councils would constitute platforms for collaboration. Our goal is for these councils to raise awareness of the importance to maintaining natural habitats for sustainable development and to generate consensus among industry to pursue environmentally sustainable investments. After meetings with businesses in Delhi and Singapore during President Zelik's recent trips, we have started the process in India and we're excited that today we'll be signing with the Confederation of Industry of Indian Industry to set up the Indian Wildlife Business Council. I'm very pleased to see our colleagues from CII here today. Once these councils are up and running, IFC will look for opportunities to invest in projects and provide an advice to unlock value and job creation possibilities that will enable business and conservation to work hand in hand. We see potential in tourism, in certified agribusiness and forestry, in sustainable sourcing, as well as an opportunity to give advice to other financial institutions that will finance projects that preserve natural habitats. In summary, given IFC's successful past experiences in this space and our expertise in galvanizing private sector interest, we are very well placed and very excited about contributing towards the Global Tiger Initiative and biodiversity conservation in general. We look forward to working with all of you on the next steps for this important initiative. Thank you very much. Karen, thank you very much. May I now have the pleasure of inviting Mr. Zelik to address us. Well, welcome to all of you and thank you very much for joining us today. Four years on, the Global Tiger Initiative has changed the conversation about tiger conservation. As I think all of you know, in 2008, uh, the World Bank Group, the Smithsonian Institution, the Jeff, 
and the International Tiger Coalition came together because wild tigers were falling dangerously close to extinction. We knew we had to create a sense of urgency because tigers were disappearing. And we knew that saving the tiger had to be a global challenge, an alliance of strong local commitment across the 13 Tiger Range countries, but also backed by deep international support. So through the Global Tiger Initiative, we've been able to create a platform for building both a joint vision, but also implementing coordinated action. And through that cooperative movement, we were able to tee up the St. Petersburg Tiger Summit in 2010, a historic program that endorsed the program for recovery. Now at last, there's some glimmers of hope for the tiger and the biodiversity that it represents. The GTI is working as a powerful instrument of change, spurring both local and global innovation. At the local level, Kishoff has already described many of the Tiger Range country's accomplishments and their ambitious plans for the future. And you can see more of that in the implementation report that we're issuing this morning. At the global level, smart green infrastructure is helping to include priority tiger habitats into land and infrastructure planning. The wildlife premium initiative gives value to forest wildlife and provides incentives to help protect endangered animals. And vitally important, the International Consortium for Combating Wildlife Crime, a cooperative effort by five international agencies with wildlife law enforcement, is supporting the Tiger Range countries in their daily fight against organized wildlife crime. Now, one of the most exciting new developments is the one that Karen mentioned, is the idea of bringing together this effort with the private sector, which can bring us new ideas, new resources, through IFC and the GTI's engagement. The new Indian Wildlife Business Council is leading the way, and I can't think of a better country to begin in. And it has the potential to completely change the dynamic in the relationship between industry and conservation. But we're also seeing something bigger that I hope all of you can be proud of. The Global Tiger Initiative has emerged as a new business and policy model for how governments in the conservation community can work together with the World Bank Group to be able to conserve biodiversity. We've got increasing interest in trying to apply this model to other areas of conservation, whether elephants or rhinos or leopards. Partnership has been the key to success. As all of you know, there are many efforts to try to save the tiger and other species. We have a lot of conservation groups that devoted many hours and dollars to this effort. But I think what's been key is drawing together all the parties together. The Smithsonian Institution, led by Secretary Clough, is a leading knowledge partner. The Jeff, led by Monique Barbeau, is a leading funding partner. We've got the World Wildlife Fund, the Wildlife Conservation Society, Traffic, which is the Wildlife Monitoring Network, the International Fund for Animal Welfare, and others and each brings a very special expertise to the Alliance. And across the World Bank, we've got support from our Sustainable Development Network, the World Bank Institute. We're now engaging our regions and our country offices. And as Kishoff mentioned, the other good news is we're starting to get resources beginning to flow from the World Bank Group, from the Jeff, from the US government and others. And as he mentioned, about 60% of the necessary funds for the first five years of implementing the Global Tiger Recovery Program is already secured. And I'm particularly delighted that today we're going to be welcome a new knowledge partner. Clemson University's Open Parks Grid offers a revolutionary way for managers of protected areas to connect, to be able to share experience and scientific research, and learn from one another. Exactly the type of development we hope to spur. So I look forward to hearing today about the reflections of our Tiger Range countries and the partner representatives. As you know, these are the countries that are critical. These are the countries on the ground where the tigers live, and their success is fundamental to any effort. The leadership and commitment of each and every one of these Tiger Range countries is what makes this project so unique and so powerful. The vision of these leaders in getting results in action on the ground 
often involving some very courageous frontline staff from reserve directors and guards to rangers is the key. So I'm really delighted we have the ministers from Bangladesh, Bhutan, Vietnam, countries on the front line of tiger conservation. These ministers are the strongest champions of the GTI, and I want to thank them for their special leadership role with the tiger recovery planning. Now, as Kishoff mentioned, the next three years for the implementation of these recovery plans are absolutely critical for wild tigers. We're just down to the barest number, and a few mistakes here and there, and this species could be gone. So it's heartening that we see the commitment of the Tiger Range countries and all the GTI partners to be strong and focused, and I'm particularly pleased we're drawing in new partners. As I think most of you or all of you know, this is my last week. It's a pretty busy one, but I wanted to come to this event because I think it's so important and because I wanted to thank the Tiger Range countries, our partners, and my colleagues across the World Bank group. Uh, Kishoff and the GTI Secretariat deserve a particular thanks. John Seidensticker, who's really been with us from the very start of this, has been an extraordinary leadership. And working with all of you, uh, and many who can't be here today, has really been a great privilege. So while I leave the bank at the end of the week, you can be certain that I'll be following the progress of this group quite closely as we move forward to that goal we set of doubling the number of tigers worldwide. So I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish, and I look forward to seeing wild tigers flourish in years to come. Thank you. Mr. Delek, thank you very much. We have uh, the Honorable Minister from Env of, of Environment Forest from Bangladesh, Mr. Hassan Mahmood, to come and address from here. Uh, Mr. Hormetz is here also, so would you please come and take your seat. Mr. Mahmood, please come. World Bank President, Mr. Zelik, ministers from different countries, U.S. Undersecretary, representatives from GEF, Smithsonian Institute, and from other institutes. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. Indeed, we human, we often forget that we are not the master of the universe, or we are not master of the planet Earth. This planet is owned by all the creatures of God, and tiger is one of those. And tiger is at the top of the food chain. And as we did mistake in the past, in realization that the protection of the environment, protection of the wildlife, is for the protection of human in this planet. That's why we made a lot of destruction. That's why a number of tigers have been reduced from 100,000 to now 3,200. And I must register my thanks to the World Bank President, Mr. Zelik, and other institutes who initiated this initiative, Global Tiger Initiative, for the protection of the tiger because you have rightfully understood that this is important to protect the tigers for the protection of the environment and for the betterment of the human being in this planet. Today is the fourth anniversary of the initiative. And over the last, since 2008, over the last four years, we have done a lot of things, the tiger range countries, have taken many initiatives for the protection of the tigers. And today we can trust on this initiative. We can put our trust on the people who are engaged in this initiative that tiger will be increased, not will be decreased, further will be increased. And according to our goal, by 2022, the number of tigers will be doubled. And today, what are the challenges there are many challenges. The challenges, illegal poaching is one of the major challenges today, globally. Degradation of the forest because of many reasons, because of greed of the human, because of 
expansion of the cities because of making shelter, because of extraction of resources from the forest. There are many challenges today, but we have to face all those challenges. In facing all those challenges, we have to achieve the goal, doubling the number of tigers by 2022. In Bangladesh, Bangladesh is the country having highest density of population in this planet. 1,000 population per square kilometer in Bangladesh. And Bangladesh is also proud to be the country having highest density of population of tigers in a single forest, Sundarbon. The area of Sundarbon is 6,000 square kilometer and number of tigers, 440 to 450 number of tigers. So highest density of population in a single forest. Although we are having highest density of human population in this planet, but still we are proud to be the country having highest density of population of tigers in this planet. And despite many challenges in Bangladesh, we are protecting our tigers. We have taken many initiatives for the protection of the tigers. Sundarban is spread between two countries, Bangladesh and India. And Sundarban is a continuous and one ecosystem. But there is one thing was lacking. One thing was lacking, that is initiative under same umbrella for the protection of Sundarban and for the protection of tigers in Sundarban. During the visit of Indian Prime Minister Manamohan Singh, Honorable Manamohan Singh, we signed MOU as MOU was signed between Bangladesh and India for the protection of the tigers. We signed another MOU for the protection of the continuous ecosystem, one ecosystem, Sundarban. Because to protect one ecosystem, you need to have an initiative under the same umbrella that was lacking before we have done so. And in Bangladesh, we have taken many other initiative. When the population is increasing, then to protect the forest and the wildlife, it is very difficult, especially in Bangladesh. Then what we have done, it is important to give the sense to the people that you are the owner of this forest and this wildlife is your, for your protection and for your betterment. And that's why we have taken the initiative co-management system. We have introduced co-management system in the, in the forest management system. And I'm happy and I'm proud to say today that our co-management system has been recognized by UN. We have got UN Equator Prize and it was delivered in the last week in, in Rio. Uh, I'm crossing my limit, as I know. So we have taken many initiatives and in Bangladesh, I'm thankful to World Bank that uh, under World Bank f uh, funding, we have taken a regional project to strengthen regional cooperation for wildlife protection. And in Bangladesh, from this uh, uh, project, we are getting 36 million US dollars. And we have many other initiative sales projects with the help of EU. And uh, we have introduced many other systems. I cannot elaborate because of the time constraint. But I believe on this fourth anniversary of the initiative, the commitment that has been showed under the leadership of World Bank President Mr. Zelik, the people, the ministers, the governments, the other entrepreneurs who, are gathered, who have gathered here and who are linked to this initiative, the commitment that you have made, that you have shown the willingness, I'm pretty sure it would be able for the human population, for us to double the tiger, number of tigers in this planet by 2022. And that is for the protection of human, for the betterment of human. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. May I speak? Uh, may I now request uh, the Honorable Minister from Bhutan to say a few words? Um, exercising a bit of a constraint on time. Uh, politic, uh, politics and time doesn't go together very well. I used to run cities and I know that. But please, sir. Uh, thank you, Keshav. You have already taken one minute of my time. <laughs> President Zolik, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, 
Please accept the greetings of the people and government of Bhutan. I take this opportunity to express our sincere appreciation to the President of the World Bank, Mr. Robert Zolik, and the Global Tiger Initiative for hosting this high-level meeting in Washington. The high-level GTI meeting is a great opportunity for us to review what we have done in the past few years and to consider the path ahead. We all know that this process has come a long way and the GTI in particular, played a key role in catalyzing these events starting from Patea in April 2009 to Kathmandu, Huahin, St. Petersburg, and more recently, the GTRB stock-taking meeting in New Delhi. Importantly, I must say that the St. Petersburg event in November 2010, facilitated by GTI and co-hosted by Russian Federation, was an extraordinary event with all the Tiger Range countries uh, political leaders, conservationists uh, alike, and celebrities coming together to decide the fate of a non-human species, considered majestic, revered, and respected by all segments of our society. I therefore would like to offer my deep appreciation on the commendable bank work initiated by the World Bank and GTI team in particular for their tireless effort. The Royal Government has on its own, uh, contributed significantly to the important process. As many of you must be aware, environmental conservation is considered a serious business in Bhutan. Two facts explain this situation. Firstly, our natural protected areas increased from 26% in 1993 to 51% in 2010. Secondly, Bhutan's development is guided by the philosophy of gross national happiness, which prioritizes conservation as one of the four pillars. I would like to share that the Royal Government of Bhutan is also part of the GTI initiative to promote regional wildlife conservation. In collaboration with the GTI, we have implemented the Smart Green Infrastructure Workshop in Bhutan, where representatives of the participating TRCs have agreed to mainstream tiger conservation into roads, mining, hydro projects, and other infrastructure in investment development projects. Their commitment has been formalized through the Timbu recommendations, and some of the immediate follow-ups in Bhutan can be cited as the realignment of a Bhutan government's southeast uh, highway, a vital element in meeting the Royal Government's development objective, and previously proposed to pass through a section of the Royal Manas National Park, which also is known to be a key habitat of tigers in Bhutan. I would also like to say that we have effectively scrapped a hydropower plant proposed to be established in one of the habitats of the tiger, uh, or habitats of tiger. We also organized a workshop, not a workshop, a workshop of all the stakeholders through the forest, one of the key habitats of tiger in the Bhutan, so that uh, stakeholders can discuss on site the issues and challenges facing tiger conservation in Bhutan. The people of Bhutan have always coexisted with tigers and other species of wildlife. For centuries, we have known and respected this existence of tigers in our mountain areas. Not to challenge or to compare with my colleague from Bangladesh, I would like to say that Bhutan has perhaps the highest number of tigers in the smallest country. <laughs> it is in this unique pristine environment that Bhutan, though small in geographical site, perhaps provides the best hope for tiger conservation and survival in the world. I would like to say that Bhutan also provides a safe haven for tigers from India and Bangladesh whenever they need to get inspiration. <laughs> Finally, I would like to wish President Zolik a roaring start to whatever he is planning to do when he leaves the bank this weekend. We hope that he would continue to roar for us and for the Tigers. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be no room for negotiations on the survival of this iconic species. As you already heard, the numbers have reached a level that to recover from there would be very, very difficult. Therefore, there is no time to lose, and we hope that the World Bank and our key partners, represented here by the CEOs of WWF, IFAO, Jeff, and others, would come forward and help the Tiger Range countries 
to honor the commitment that we have made, that is to double the tiger population by the year 2022. I would like to refer all of you to refer page five of the tiger report where we have a resolution to acknowledge the tremendous uh, support and leadership provided by President Solik. We hope that the new leadership will continue to provide this support and that the new leadership is also a reincarnation of a tiger as President Solik is. Thank you very much. May I now invite Mr. Robert Hermerts to say a few words, please? Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here today. I want to start by paying tribute to Bob Zellick who really has been an, an inspirational leader in all this, all that's going on with respect to the tiger and many other conservation initiatives as well. Uh, this is one of Bob's many legacies and I can pledge to you, Bob, that the United States, uh, which has supported you, will continue to urge uh, your successor and um, his team to continue this initiative because it is important and it requires our commitment, not just today and tomorrow, but over months and years to come. So <clears throat> this is a pledge I make to you today that this is a strong and continuing commitment by the United States and one of your many legacies that we will very much honor. The work of GTI, its members and the World Bank recognizes that the conservation of wildlife is very much in the public interest it is a, uh, in the human interest, it's in the development interests of, of many countries, and it's also very important uh, to the legacy we leave to our children and grandchildren. The U.S. is proud to have been a strong supporter of GTI and the collective efforts of the Tiger Range countries since the initiative was founded in 2008. Wildlife conservation and management is not a new issue or a new priority for the United States. In my home state of New York, in 1705, the Royal Province of New York passed what was called an Act for the Preservation of Deer and Other Game. Almost 140 years ago, President Ulysses Grant established the first national park at Yellowstone for the benefit and enjoyment of the people, as he put it. The Global Tiger Initiative is premised on the same vision and the same ideals to conserve and respect tigers and other wildlife as a public good from which everyone can benefit, and also as part of our legacy to future generations. I spent a year in East Africa and have a particularly strong commitment to supporting efforts to preserve, protect, and help to propagate increases in um, the numbers of these wonderful animals all around the world. We don't have tigers in East Africa, but many other animals are there. And these are precious gifts um, to our generation that we have to continue to ensure future generations benefit from. Through the GTI and other efforts, leaders from around the world are beginning to recognize the inherent value of biodiversity and intact ecosystems and the contribution they make to economic viability. The November 2010 St. Petersburg Tiger Summit, hosted by then Prime Minister Putin, raised the profile not only for wild tiger conservation, but for the importance of environmental issues and integrating natural resource management into economic development. Russia plays a particularly important role this year because Russia is host to and chair of uh, the APEC uh, summit. Um, and I hope that the government of Russia will take on the initiative of conservation and protection of endangered species as a high priority when it gets these groups together in the pre-summit meetings and actually the summit meeting itself, 
which will take place in Vladivostok. This is a great opportunity for the U.S. and other countries to, to cooperate with and support Russia, which has demonstrated such important leadership in this area. I'm delighted to see the progress that we've made thus far, but of course more needs to be done, particularly given the changing realities of today's world. Increasingly sophisticated illegal trade in wildlife parts is being fueled by demand for use in traditional medicine as luxury trinkets, home decor, bushmeat, and exotic pets. This is not just some group of amateurs out here. This is organized, highly organized crime, and the money that comes from this goes into various types of things such as arms trade, drug trade, people who are really sinister players on the global scene. This is not just a group of amateurs. This is very serious business, and it needs to be dealt with in a very serious way. Uh, this is true not only for the tiger, but for other wildlife as well, rhinos, elephants, bears, and so on. Uh, the rhino extermination in many parts of Africa for use for fake drugs that are allegedly cures for cancer and other things is a terrible travesty, terrible tragedy for the, for the rhinos, but also for the people who are deceived into thinking that these are good drugs and are cures for all these other diseases. The illegal wildlife trade today is estimated by some to be worth up to $10 billion per year. With so much money to be made, it's no wonder that paramilitary and organized crime groups have focused on the illegal wildlife trade right alongside weapons and narcotics. We need to work together to make a tiger um, <clears throat> living in a natural habitat uh, a, a protected animal, <clears throat> excuse me, worth more than the sum of its parts in the black market. Today's challenges to conserve tigers and other wildlife requires a three-tier approach. First, we must recognize wildlife crime as a serious crime that merits serious enforcement. That's why the United States is providing political support and funding for several major initiatives to stop international trafficking in wildlife, such as the ASEAN Wildlife Enforcement Network, the South Asia Wildlife Enforcement Network, USAID's arrest program, Project Predator through Interpol. And I'm pleased to see collaborative efforts like the International Consortium on Combating Wildlife Crime. Second, we must work together to reduce demand for illegal wildlife parts. Traditional medicine practitioners and patients must reject remedies that contain parts of endangered and protected animals. Government leaders and NGOs have a responsibility to help spread this message. I see this year's APEC Summit that I mentioned earlier as an opportunity to draw high-level attention to the illegal wildlife trade, both in terms of demand reduction and improved enforcement. Finally, we must strengthen the link between conservation and economic growth. The United States will continue to work with our partners in GTI and industry to promote green growth and smart green infrastructure, to establish a value for ecosystem services, and to make the environmental agenda an intrinsic part of the economic agenda. Meeting our shared goals to double the world tiger population by 2022 will be challenging, even more so with Bob Zellix uh, leaving the helm of the bank. But we aim to continue this legacy and to underscore the importance of continuity here. I know that the commitment of the World Bank, the GTI, Tiger Range companies, and the United States will endure because of the compelling need to address this. If we continue to work together, government, civil society, and the private sector, I remain hopeful that we will succeed in saving the tiger for generations to come, focusing priority around the world on this very important topic, and indeed protecting wildlife all around the world. This is a moral imperative of our generation as a legacy to future generations and to the better world we all seek. And I thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, may I, I'll be making some amendments in the agenda because we do want to sign the MOU uh, by 1055. But uh, from the Embassy of Russia, quickly please. Thank you very much. Um, on behalf of our Russian ambassador, Sergei Kislyak, here suddenly uh, uh, got sick yesterday. Uh, I'll, 
uh, say just a few words, and one minute is quite enough for me. So, the, uh, Mr. Hormats uh, uh, highly estimated the Russian contribution and uh, role in global process, so I have nothing to add to it. And thank you for that. Uh, just a few words about uh, the role of uh, uh, Russia. Uh, uh, what we have done for the half of the century. Uh, uh, Forty years ago, the population of Tigris and Primoria region in the far east of Russia estimated just uh, a 70 to uh, 80 tigers. Now we have uh, 440, and we continue our work, to, uh, our work and uh, you know that uh, uh, we have launched a program uh, four years ago, and we are enjoying the, uh, the support of our president, Vladimir Putin, and we have uh, hosted in St. Petersburg, Petersburg two years ago the International Tiger Conservation Forum. Uh, so we have uh, launched the so-called uh, Tiger Day, which celebrates the Lord of the Usuri Taiga. Uh, and it was uh, held last year for the first time. Uh, so we, uh, our uh, 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 work is uh, to be continued. Uh, we have uh, different programs in, in the Far East, and if I had time, I could uh, talk about it much. But uh, in, uh, I, I just wanted just to thank uh, Mr. Zelik for the, for the leadership of preserving and saving tigers worldwide, and uh, 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 it was uh, and many thanks to the World Bank leadership for that, and it was a great opportunity for me to speak in such a distinguished auditorium. Thank you. That was almost a minute. May I now request uh, the uh, Clemson University to come up here, and uh, uh, they'll sit uh, next. Uh, sir, if you can. May I require, request uh, Ms. Indrani Sen from the Confederation of Indian Industry to come up? Ms. Indrani Kar, my apologies. Thank you very much. Uh, just before I invite the next speaker, I'd like to convey that uh, 
the minister from Bhutan has suggested holding a ministerial conference uh, to ensure the political will around the stock taking that is taking place. A ministerial conference to be held in Bhutan immediately after the COP that is somewhere in uh, starting the 22nd of October. He will of course be sending the formal um, approvals to that effect and we'd like to thank you for this offer very much. May I now invite the Honorable Minister from Bhutan, uh, uh, Vietnam to come here. Honorable President of the World Bank, Mr. Robert P. Jolik, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is an honor for me to have the opportunity to participate in this high-level event to evaluate outcomes and challenges during the period of four years since the launch of the GTI in June 2008. Thank you for inviting me and my colleagues from Vietnam to this unique and important event. We appreciate and commend the support and coordination by the GTI World Bank with the Tiger Ranch countries and international communities to save global tiger from the brink of extinction in our lifetime and on efforts met by all of you to prevent such a tragedy. So I cut short my talk. <laughs> in order to implement the St. Petersburg Declaration, a national and the global tiger recovery program aiming at significant reduction of the threats to tiger. Vietnam has set out the annual priority actions and up to now we have gained a number of major, major achievements which includes number one, submission of endangered species decree for the government uh, approval. Second, five tigers protected areas were surveyed to select one for intensive management and restoration. Three, increased enforcement resulting in illegal tiger cases uncovered and subject to punished, as well as signing MOUs with Laos and Cambodia at bordering provincial levels to strengthen enforcement and control of transboundary wildlife smuggling, joining the predator project launched by Interpol. Four, increased awareness through successful organization of the first ceremony <coughs> of the Global Tiger Day. Five, enforcement and management capacities strengthened through organization of TOT training course of scientists, regulations, and Vietnam WEN interagency workshop. Roundtable discussion on tiger conservation and participation in missed training course and scale up. Six, finally, with the strong support from World Bank in Vietnam, we developed successfully a one million US dollar project proposal that approved by the GEF. The implementation of this project will contribute greatly to reduce the demand for illegal wildlife in Vietnam. Based on the initial achievements and with a desire to keep this momentum going together with the World Bank and other TRCs in the coming years, Vietnam would strongly request the World Bank and GTI to continue your coordination drones and provide support to Vietnam in implement the NTRB, including one, implement the content, contents of the biodiversity law, two, strengthen the law enforcement on tiger and wildlife crime, including building capacity for DNA analysis of confiscated tigers from illegal threat and smuggling. Three, establish a tiger conservation demonstration site, which might include the scientific-based translocation program to recover the white tiger due to the challenge facing near extinct white tiger population. So. And four, improve the knowledge and awareness to war tiger and wildlife conservation aim at reducing the demand. As a, strongly, a country strongly support GTI at the beginning, we would like to share your view on several questions. First, how is the future of GTI? What is the outreach for long-term more sustainable financing for tiger conservation? Two, how will the World Bank better link with initiative with other ongoing efforts made by other conventions, such as CBD, CITES, especially Global Tiger Forum, etc.? 
Three, what is the bank plan to support Thai Orange country to implement GTRB and NTRB in the years to come? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. May I, see, uh, may I now request Mr. Clough to say a few words, please? Yes. Thank you, Kishov, and thank you for your leadership, and uh, especially acknowledging the great leadership and legacy left by Bob Zalek in uh, getting this project going. And it's a complicated one, but so important to us. Uh, with the help of the World Bank and dozens of NGOs and the efforts of the 13 Tiger Range countries, we're not only raising awareness of the plight of the wild tiger, we are encouraging action. As we begin a new chapter of collaboration with the incoming President Kim, I look forward on behalf of the Smithsonian to continuing a strong partnership with all of our partners here and with the World Bank. I'd like to recognize my colleagues, John Steinbacher and uh, Steve Monfort, who are here, who are the folks who really get this work done uh, from the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute and for their great work in conservation. The Smithsonian has a long history to protect wildlife and pr promote biodiversity. Because tigers are an indication of e the health of ecosystems, they are considered an umbrella species. Protecting the tiger means protecting all of the biodiversity around it, from other, and, as well as other rare and threatened species. Secretary S. Dillon Ripley pledged in 1969 in New Delhi that the Smithsonian would work to save wild tigers from extinction. The Global Tiger Recovery Program is the latest example of our commitment to Secretary Ripley's long-standing pledge. The audacious goal of the Global Tiger Recovery Program is to double the wild tiger population by 2022, the next Chinese year of the tiger. We are optimistic that we will all get there working together. In the past, localized interventions in, interventions in tiger populations haven't been as successful as hoped. But the Global Tiger Initiative and the Global Tiger Recovery Program have shown great promise. These new models of collaboration and partnership encourage stakeholders throughout the public and private sectors. If successful, the Global Tiger Recovery Program can be more than a way to save the tiger. It can show how to stem the loss of other important endangered species, including rhinos, elephants, and the ecosystems that support them. Through education and coordination with local governments, universities, corporations, and people, these kinds of efforts make a difference. For example, India is taking bold steps to prevent poaching. Stringent anti-poaching measures there have been invaluable in one national park with the largest population of one-horned rhinos and the highest density of tigers in the world. Another important milestone in tiger protection efforts has been Project Predator. Created by Interpol, this program provides an intelligence sharing platform for police, customs, and wildlife officials to track down poachers and eliminate trafficking. This is a true example of the power of collaboration. USAID, UK's Department of the Environment and Food and Rural Affairs, joined with law enforcement, the Smithsonian, and the World Bank with this project. The Smithsonian has identified four grand challenges for its future, one of which is understanding and sustaining the biodiversity of our planet. In Asia, nothing represents biodiversity more than the tiger. The Smithsonian's Conservation Biology Institute, John Seidensticker, has defined the waning wild tiger population as a wicked problem. Its incomplete information, contradictory approaches to remedies, and challenges unique to the tiger range countries make it a Gordian knot that permit no easy solution. But the, in, the expertise and consensus-driven problem-solving of the global, global Tiger Initiative it will be the sword that cuts through the Gordian Knot. And so 43 years after Secretary Dylan Ripley's commitment to the wild tiger in New Delhi, today we come full cir circle to hear the results of the New Delhi stock-taking conference, and we're proud to be part of it. We welcome our new stock, uh, stakeholders who will add muscle to this effort, Clemson University, the National Parks Institute, Yosemite National Park, and the Confederation of Indian Inter in in Industries. I know something incidentally about Clemson's commitment to the tiger, because as president of Georgia Tech for 14 years, we had to play them in football, and their mascot is a tiger, and every time they scored a touchdown, the tiger proudly roared and, and celebrated. Georgia Tech's mascot is a yellow jacket, an insect. <laughs> 
And so we were always a little jealous of Clemson's Tigers, but we welcomed them to our team for what they will bring. And so I think working together again, we have a chance to reach our audacious goal of doubling the Tiger population by 2022. I request Fred from I4 to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much. What I'd like to do is give a little bit of an approach from the ground level. Uh, this is where sort of IFA has been involved in this process. Uh, we have three goals. One is to, is to strengthen anti-poaching efforts in key areas. Secondly, is to assist in demand reduction for tiger parts and tigers themselves. And third, and most importantly, is to build local capacity for sustainable results. Let me give you a few examples. For example, in India, we have partnered with WTI, the Wildlife Trust of India, and have trained over 7,000 park rangers. We've also instituted a life insurance, for the first time, a life and uh, disability insurance, which has proven very, very well. In Russia, we work with the Kazan uh, rangers in, the, in eastern Russia, who are protecting the last range for the Amur tiger. That's a very aggressive uh, rangers that they've turned into. They, have, they do about 18 patrols per month. They have also arrested over 100 in the last three years. We use that to sort of lobby in the Russian uh, Federation. As they know, we asked for an increase in the fines, and they increased it from $50 to $20,000. 20, uh, Russia really makes decisions. Uh, in Bhutan, we have also done cross-border training between, between Russia and India, and now with Bhutan, and I'm glad to see the Honorable Minister here, We've had an MOU with, uh, between IFAW, the World Wildlife Trust of India, and Bhutan. We are going to train 400 frontline staff, providing protection techniques, criminal investigations, and use of Bhutan law. The program has been moving along exceedingly well. We've had wonderful partnership. In China, we are partners with the Freeland Foundation and U.S. aid-sponsored arrest program, which is all about demand reduction. We in China, for example, because of the digital aspect, we've got a lot of online uh, looking for keywords, trying to find where they're going. We've worked at Interpol very closely on this. An example is, for example, they found out just a few weeks ago that there was a, a traditional medicines auction uh, in, in a rather high-class hotel in Beijing. They found out about it. We got to the police, and the forestry police came and broke it up. Um, I think that the, the – this is some, some examples. What, so what are we learning out of this? I think one is there's no silver bullet. There's no cookie cutter approach. Given the diversity of geographic, political, cultural, you have to be responsive, flexible, and understand the, the context in which you're working. That's why we've implemented everything through our program for our country offices in China, Russia, uh, <clears throat> and uh, it's India, sorry. The secondly is that a lot, a little well thought out assistance can go a long way. Uh, while there's certainly a need for major funding for habitats protection and management, building local capacity is critical and it is, can be very, very cost effective. No silver bullet, be flexible and responsible, and we think that well-placed, significantly significant investments of, of about $50,000 to $100,000 can do an awful lot of good with the training and capacity building locally. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. May I uh, request Carter Roberts, World Wildlife Fund, and also recognize the presence of our very close partners, National Geographic. There are very few things in our work that are black and white. Most of the things we work on are in shades of gray. But there is nothing subtle about the criminal trade and wildlife. This is a travesty that we need to shut down and soon. The trade in rhino and elephant parts is increasing every day. And we are desperately seeking solutions to prevent the disappearance of those species. What has happened over the past couple of years with tigers gives us some measure of hope. I actually believe that by the year 2020, we will see our dreams come true. It has to begin now with zero poaching because every animal counts. But by the year 2020, I believe that we will see 6,500 tigers in the world, that we will see core areas protected, that we will see the criminal trade severely depleted, that we will see 
the production of new commodities moved to degraded lands and save the tropical forests that support tigers and many other species. And I, will, I believe that we will see the trade in par tiger parts become uncool. All of this is necessary. And I believe that all of it will happen, in large part because of the extraordinary leadership from the range countries that have been represented here today, and also the leadership of the World Bank. Um, leadership is everything. If you want to know what leaders value, just walk into their office. I've been in Minister Pema Giamsho's office where the four magical animals of Bhutan were represented. And I even have those now in my office in Washington, D.C. One of those is the tiger. And if any of you have spent time in Bob Zellick's office, you will know that he cares deeply about tigers. Literally every wall is festooned with gorgeous photographs of tigers, maps of tigers, and we applaud the extraordinary leadership that he has brought to bringing the world together to address this problem. Bob, I only hope that when you leave and occupy your next significant role in this world, that you can take some of those photographs with you. Because I think for all of us, this is not a one or two year project. This is a project of a lifetime. I know that you're deeply committed to this and will continue in this great work as I know everybody will here today. And I believe that we will succeed. Thank you very much. Carter, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to inform that Mr. Zelik will be leaving now. I would request Mr. Bruno Laporte to take the chair. Yeah. May I request, uh, I, I, we did have a few thoughts from the Clemsons and Indrani Kar. So would you like to come, Doris, up and say a few words? <clears throat> After this, uh, His Excellency Dr. John Sidon Sticker will say something. Thank you, Mr. Varma, honored guests. Thank you very much for including Clemson University today in this very momentous event. It is truly an honor to be included with so many distinguished and dedicated people wishing to conserve the world's populations of tigers in the 13 tiger range countries. And as a university that has the tiger as its mascot, as you've just heard, um, we're all tiger lovers. And if you wondered what I was putting on Ms. Um, President Zellick's lapel earlier, it's a tiger paw, which is our symbol. So he has been suitably pawed today, something I'm sure that has never happened to him before. You know, as I began to familiarize myself with the Global Tiger Initiative, I realized that there are many similarities between the needs of the Global Tiger Initiative and our National Park Service. For instance, we have less than optimal communication across large areas and remote areas, especially across governmental and other kinds of jurisdictional boundaries. And somehow we needed to be able to connect across those areas. We also needed to be able to better disseminate the knowledge and scientific findings that we have to the community of people interested in, in conservation, especially the managers on the ground who have to do that work to keep all of our beautiful lands in good repair. We also needed the ability to share and dialogue and collaborate with others in order to solve the challenges that we see today. So in order to address these problems, we developed something special. We developed something called the Open, Open Parks Grid. It is a cyber infrastructure mechanism to connect and collaborate. But really the most exciting thing about the open parks grid is that it doesn't belong to anybody. It belongs to absolutely everyone. We freely connect and collaborate, sharing our ideas, our data, and our discoveries to address major interests to all. 
So you're asking yourself, what is this cyber infrastructure grid? It is a technology solution. On the open grid, we are able to develop groups and focus on a particular problem. You can have any number of members. You can have security on that grid, wikis, blogs, document and database, share, database sharing devices are all available on the open parks grid. You can establish a topic, post materials, best management practices, curriculum, videos, anything you want to share with others on the open parks grid. You can ask a question. You can post a research interest. And we're about to start a micro-grant program that will bring together research interests, researchers, and those who want to help fund the conservation requests that we post. You can post upcoming events, various kinds of conferences, public meetings, professional development opportunities, all on the Open Parks grid. Beginning October 12th, you will be able to search our parks and protected area repository of journal articles, maps, photos, and agency documents. And soon, in combination with the Global Tigers Initiative, you will be able to use our advanced GPS and GIS and other cyber infrastructure tools to address some of the problems that we've heard of today. For instance, you will be able to more efficiently track radio tagged animals. You will be able to view the onset of human encroachment on landscape or on regional areas. You'll be able to map patterns of poaching and share and store this data for retrieval and for future use. The grid is all about connecting and facilitating collaboration. We can mobilize and collect a variety of resources, including people. We can engage experts and thought leaders. We can facilitate timely science and database decisions. And we can reach out and connect to others, especially to our youth, who will be the people who need to solve these challenges in the future. But what I find most exciting about the grid is its capacity to be useful in many ways that we have not even imagined at this point. It is like a living organism, constantly evolving to meet your needs. Together, we can continue to increase the diversity of the grid, its uses, and its capacity. So we are very pleased to join you and to join the Tigers Initiative to connect and collaborate with all of you and to continue the Open Parks Grid as a means for true international partnership as we strive to save the world from some of its most threatening problems. Let us work together, even though it will be in many languages, which soon we will be able to do on the grid, to save the tiger. Thank you. Doris, thank you very much. Indrani, would you like to please uh, come up here? Mr. Bruno Lapard, Acting Vice President of the World Bank Group, Honorable Ministers and Dignitaries from Bangladesh, Bhutan, the Russian Federation, the United States of America, and Vietnam, uh, distinguished members of the dais, Mr. Keshav Varma, the Program Director of the GTI, distinguished representatives from the World Bank Group and their partners in this initiative, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, I bring my greetings from the Confederation of Industry to you from India. It is a privilege to be standing here on this momentous occasion of the fourth anniversary of the GTI and teeing off this pioneering initiative of setting up the first Indian Wildlife Business Council. And may I again on behalf of the CII extend our heartfelt thanks for inviting us to join this initiative you know, and being a part, part of this important initiative. This marks the beginning of a new journey for CII in taking one step further its mission 
for integrating profits. As you know, we are a business association. Integrating profits with the planet and the people. CII, a little bit of history as the apex body for business and industry in India, is actually committed to bringing in transformational change. And it had played a key role in India's liberalization process and subsequently in building up capacities, competencies, and competitiveness of India, both at the firm level and at the country level. We have continued to play a major partnership role with the government and various institutions in, in kind of pursuing this objective. It is as long as 15 years back that the leadership in CII became conscious of the needs for embracing the agenda of sustainability and inclusion over and above its running theme of competitiveness. This led CII to add three major components in its work, that is on corporate governance, on sustainability and development initiatives. To address what we call today the triple bottom line approach of the people, planet and profit. Over these years, CI has become acutely aware of the need of corporate involvement on sustainability issues and the inclusion of public and community interests into corporate activities, initiatives and decision making. And that is why CII is so thankful to the World Bank Group and its partners, the IFC and the IDA, for providing the business and industrial community of India through CII this unique opportunity of integrating with the Global Tiger Initiative. It actually all started when Mr. Zelik had gone to India recently in May and with a request from Mr. Keshav Varma to organize a very select group of CEO and uh, to discuss about how can businesses come into this place. This roundtable came out with an unanimous recommendation of setting up this business council on tiger and biodiversity conservation, which has seen the fructification today. For us in Ti India, the tiger is our national animal and given our landscape and tracts of forests, we have a very critical role to play towards its conservation. And it, we realize that it is only through partnerships, collective action, and effective engagement of all stakeholders can we make a mark in this subject. This MOU is a testimony of our support and commitment towards this cause. The MOU seeks to work collaboratively on de developing a structured program for integrating development and conservation issues through industry action. It has various aspects, essentially on raising awareness and, you know, kind of advocating for policies which are biodiversity friendly, the champion with the national and global policymakers on this, and share and uh, seek and share global knowledge and expertise on how biodiversity and ecosystem services can provide win-win solutions. CI will be very happy to share its knowledge, stewardship, and leverage its network of members to, to pursue this. We will press into action two of our centers of excellence, namely the CII ITC Center for Sustainable Development and the CII Sorabji Godrej Green Business Center. And we also have with us our, what is called Young Indians. It is a, it is a sister organization which involves the young people of India. Lastly, we have memorandum of understanding with over 240 counterpart organizations in 101 countries, including all the Asian countries. And we'd be very happy to, you know, after our initial, you know, experiment and after initial work, to see how we can also engage and collaborate together with the countries. That's all. On behalf of CII, I'd really like to specially thank Mr. Zelik for this, you know, visionary leadership. We uh, have had, you know, had opportunities of interacting with him in various other areas, especially in global trade negotiations. Uh, so we thank him for, for this. I'd also like to thank Mr. Kesha Varma, Program Director of the Global Tiger Initiative, for his consistent efforts towards making this happen. You know, we've been truly impressed by the concrete progress made by the Global Tiger Initiative in a very short span of time. And we hope that the India Wildlife Business Council will be able to continuously draw on the council and guidance of the World Bank Group and other, you know, all countries that are involved in it. We are conscious that businesses cannot succeed in societies that have failed. So that is why a little contribution to this. Thank you very much, you know. Indrani, thank you very much. May I request Yoko to read the speech of Monique? And Mr. Hart Schaefer is here. He could join the uh, panel on behalf of SDN. Uh, could you just come up, please, Mr. Schaefer? So, um, Yoko, 
Uh, speed reading, please. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Yoko Watanabe. I'm a program manager at the Global Environmental Facility. I am here today on behalf of Ms. Monique Barbu, CEO of the GF. Monique had planned to come here to speak, but she had had to change her travel schedule following the Rio Plus 20 Summit, and she sends her deep regrets not being here today. Monique is personally and deeply involved and passionate about the Tiger and Global Tiger Initiative for the past four years. Thank you for allowing me to speak today on her behalf. And I understand the pressing time uh, right now, so I am just picking the key points from her speech. Distinguished ministers, President Zalek, ladies and gentlemen, the GF has been an original partner with the World Bank and others at, in the launching of the Global Tiger Initiative four years ago. The Global Tiger Summit was a groundbreaking event to commit conserving the majestic animal. But at the same time, uh, we noted then and moving forward that we need to move from words to actions. The GF has done exactly that in the past 18 months, and that is what I want to report you today. During the 18 months since the summit, the GF has worked very closely with all of you, particularly those on the ground in the Tiger Range countries. The GF Council, including at its meeting earlier this month, have approved total of 13 projects totaling $65 million in total for tiger and tiger habitat conservation. These projects are closely aligned with the global and national tiger rec recovery programs. These, ha these funds have also leveraged a further $300 million in co-financing from various partners. Altogether, we anticipate that these projects will strengthen the management of more than 12 million hectares in the tiger habitat. This actually ex exceeds far um, beyond my commitment made at the uh, St. Petersburg Summit. I commend the Tiger Range countries for their strong ownership and prioritizing Jeff Finance towards this initiative. Tiger and tiger conservation is not a new business for the GF. Even prior to the St. Petersburg Summit, the GF have already invested about $100 million in total for tiger conservation. But we know that we need to do it more in a different way now, in a more much innovative way. And that's why we're supporting the wildlife premium, the, uh, the smart green infrastructure, and also projects through the Save Our Species, which is our innovative public partnership initiative with the World Bank and others. I cannot conclude this speech without recognizing the leadership and vision that President Bob Zelik has provided through, this, through his support for his, this innovative initiative. Though I trust, and as, I, as he said, he will be engaged in the fight for saving the tigers even after he leaves the bank in few days, and we need to make sure that he, his legacy will be continued and even strengthened in the years to come. And I must also inform that I am also leaving my position at the end of the next month, but I am confident that my successor, Naoko Ishii, will continue the Jeff's support towards the Tiger Initiative. I will keep my eye on the progress we're making, and I will look forward to the reunion, celebrating together the recovery of the Tiger population with all of you. Thank you very much. Yogo, thank you very much, and we expect $500 million from GEF. Uh, so thank you for committing to that. Uh, I'd like to recognize Terry Garcia. Would you, would you like to, from National Geographic, would you like to say a few words before I invite uh, Dr. Sadden Sticker, who helped me to understand the difference between running cities and uh, managing tiger conservation. So, John, please. So it's left to me to, to um, take advantage of the fact that I'm a senior citizen, and I've been around tiger conservation for as long as we've been trying to save tigers. And to ask the question, what's different this time? Why do we think this time we can uh, save tigers where we were failing in the past? 
I think what's different this time is we have a really big focus, and the focus has been on tigers, it's been on tigers, it's been on tiger landscapes that, I mean, the, the landscapes that support tigers. I think what's different this time is that we have redefined the way we approach conservation, uh, tiger conservation specifically. We've shifted from what I call isolated interventions by individual organizations to a coordinated collective impact that is led by the tiger range countries themselves. When we gathered at the Smithsonian's National Zoo four years ago and launched, uh, and launched the uh, Global Tiger Initiative, wild tigers and their habitats were being annihilated. And in spite of all of our best efforts over the last 40 years, we were not saving wild tigers. We were hopefully slowing their rate of decline, but now the GTI has escorted the preparation of the Global Tiger Recovery Program and its implementation. So President Zelik, I really want to thank you for leading the Global Tiger Initiative these last four years. Uh, your leadership has been transformational. You recognize that the continued presence of wild tigers in Asian forests was an indicator of healthy environments that is vital to the health of all of us. And we welcome your sage advice as we move forward. I want to thank my colleagues at the bank for bringing the leveraging and the convening power to saving wild tigers. So thank you, Jim, Christian, Hart, Sanjay, uh, Bruno, Vinod, Richard, and of course, Keshav, who, I want you to pay attention to this, Keshav. <laughs> and especially Keshav, who simply does not know the meaning of the word N-O, and the GTI Secretariat uh, team. I'm a, I applaud your professionalism, your leadership, and your bold thinking that go beyond business as usual. And I thank you, Steve and Wayne, for making wild tiger conservation a Smithsonian priority. Now, the vision to double the number of wild tigers was articulated by the Tiger Range Country Ministers in their first ever conference uh, on tiger conservation and was held in early 2010. And the Tea Times 2 uh, is the cornerstone of the St. Petersburg Declaration on Tiger Conservation and the GTRP. But what's different this time, I think, is that we have a target and not some unspecified undefined vagueness about just saving tigers. I think the target uh, gives us, the, 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 that, that's, that, that's what gives us uh, our focus. Now before the, GT, uh, uh, the GTI in, in uh, St. Petersburg, status quo tiger conservation, as I've mentioned, was isolated intervention by individuals and organizations and government departments that had too few resources and uh, they didn't have any strong supporting political will. But I think with the GTRP uh, that was approved by the heads of governments of the Tiger Range countries, we see a, re a resurgence in political support uh, from the highest levels of government, and this is what Tigers need, and I think we see that demonstrated here today. Now the overreaching challenge of Tiger conservation is that there has been insufficient demand for the survival of wild tigers living in natural landscapes. And this is what has allowed the criminal activities of poaching wild tigers and their prey, the trafficking in tiger derivatives to flourish and tiger landscapes to be diminished. And so I think through the GTRP, we are working now to innovate and create new policy tools, uh, such as smart green infrastructure and the wildlife premium mechanism that turn disincentives into incentives to protect tigers and their supporting landscapes. And of course, when we protect tigers and tiger forests, we are protecting our natural infrastructure, and that provides jobs, food security for humankind. You know, the GTRP is um, boosting our human capacity to address the wicked problems that must be solved to save wild tigers and their supporting landscapes. And the GTRP, as we've heard from Yoko, is generating the sustained financing that has long been missing from tiger conservation and biodiversity conservation generally. You know, to me, a world without tigers is a world without hope. It's like a clear night, clear night sky without any stars. Um, Indira Gandhi, Indira Gandhi said 40 years ago that a world that is unsafe for tigers is a world that is unsafe for people too. On a personal note, we were just recently in the Pana Tiger Reserve in India, where tigers were poached out a few years ago. Now, 
Pana is a superb tropical dry forest, uh, but there has, there's no connections left to other tiger forests in India. And so when the tigers were poached out, there wasn't any way for there to reestablish that population through um, dispersal. But we were really buoyed by the um, effort made by the government of India and their partners to recover Pana tigers. Uh, there are now 19 tigers, uh, including two rewilded females who have produced cubs. I think this is a dramatic example that tigers can be recovered. I think it's a dramatic example that we just need to go out and do it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, may I now request Rachel Kite, uh, the Vice President of the Sustainable Development Network of the World Bank, to, to speak to us. Good morning. Thank you very much, Keshev. Um, a, a warm welcome to all of our distinguished guests, ministers, undersecretaries, uh, experts, and to the rest of you. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you for the whole of the morning session. I just um, was called to attend a board meeting, but that ended quickly, and so I'm back. Um, I think that one of the extraordinary elements of this uh, initiative around the tiger is the true nature of partnership that it has brought out um, to bring science-based bodies together with government from the range countries, together with others who have spent so long working on this issue, um, and now increasingly bringing in the private sector as a full partner in the protection um, and the uh, well-being of this charismatic species is, I think, a lesson for all of us in how to build partnership, effective partnership, uh, going forward. For us, we therefore think that the GTI is a model for how we can move forward in biodiversity conservation because of the way in which it has created the right kind of partnership between those with aligned interests. And so we hope that we can take everything that we've learned from this particular partnership and apply it to others elsewhere. The shared goal is obviously to save the wild tiger, but the actions being taken by all of you um, and the partners in this program are really about uh, a far-reaching impact on biodiversity and the promotion of sustainable development, not just in Asia, but also beyond. I think we've also surfaced through this partnership real innovation, in particular the International Consortium for Combating Wildlife Crime and, wild and the Wildlife Premium, both of which now which are being integrated into the full programme of work of my Vice Presidency. I think the Consortium for Combating Wildlife Crime uh, stands poised to really, if it is successful, make a huge difference in the way that we look at wildlife crime from an economic perspective, from a political perspective, from a social perspective. Wildlife crime is um, rampant on the increase, dangerously so, not just for the tiger, but for other charismatic species, and has been something which has eluded the conservation community and eluded those who care about sustainable development for decades. By bringing a partnership of those who know about international law enforcement, those who understand how to track um, in this case, tiger parts or rhino horn or elephant um, ivory, um, and use the modern techniques of combating crime for a wildlife trade which is um, undermining of our common objectives of sustainable development, I think becomes critically important. And I am hopeful that um, some of the understanding that this consortium is surfacing, not just about how to fight crime, but how to change the perspectives and the values and the traditions which drive the demand for the products which are sought after in such crime, I think that this could be f fully important. We have in all of our work in SDN really started to look at the issues of behavioral uh, of behavioural psychology, behavioural economics, in driving a world off a cliff of unsustainable consumption and production. This is just one small part of it. If we can understand the behaviours behind a, a demand for a product which threatens a species so important to who we are as humanity on the planet, then we will become a, a better world for that. 
And so I think I just wanted to let you know that as we have brought so much, I think, to this partnership, our focus on the Consortium for Combating Wildlife Crime really will become a quite important part of who we are as a World Bank going forward. I'm really delighted that the Wildlife Business Council and the partnership platform really can perhaps help bring this work to scale in a different way. I've just got back literally this morning, I landed at 7 o'clock, um, from Rio, from uh, Rio Plus 20, the um, World Conference on Sustainable Development. There were a couple of things that were truly um, noteworthy, I won't give you the full analysis of the conference, but things that take, to take away which are important for our struggle for biodiversity here and for the tiger in particular. One is that it was quite clear that the private sector's role in every aspect of the sustainable development agenda is uh, to the forefront. And that leadership within the private sector is going to be critically important at a time when, frankly, negotiations between government and agreement between government, especially at the largest scale, is constantly elusive. And so while we have been able to bring range countries together and to move the ball forward in a shared commitment to the tiger, it is going to be through the actions, energy and innovation of the private sector that many of the short term, many of the concrete micro objectives of biodiversity conservation and sustainable development are going to be realised. And that was a very clear sensation and message and outcome of, of the Rio conference. Now, as we move forward, we have been, of course, concentrated on the tiger. But I think it's interesting that the model that we have used in GTI is beginning to be of interest for those concerned about other wide-ranging charismatic species whose protection is, would have a similarly wide impact. So GTI's brains are being picked for snow leopards, for rhinos, for elephants and others. And in fact, GTI is already advising the government of Kyrgyzstan on how to move forward a multi-country, multi-partner approach to preservation of the snow leopard. One of the other big things to come out of Rio was the, um, the need to move forward with action, not words, uh, on the ways in which to value natural wealth. Um, we called it in the context of Rio Natural Capital Accounting. And what was significant about Rio was that 59 countries, 88 uh, private companies, 16 other organizations and one subnational entity agreed that they would, this morning, uh, this week, start moving forward with using natural capital accounting alongside their GDP. Now, of course, the easy part of natural capital accounting is understanding the uh, buying down of the wealth of a country through the exploitation of its mineral resources, through the exploitation of its forest resources, its fish resources, for example. What is much more difficult is understanding the value of a species such as the tiger its value in terms of the protection of the ecosystem, the ecosystem services that that would provide, its value in terms of heritage and culture, its value in terms of um, its place in, in the food chain. Now, we have a, an extraordinarily expert group of people working here and with others through many other organizations through a program called Wealth Accounting, the Valuation of Ecosystems. And they have been given an enormous political boost by Rio in that 59 countries want to figure out how to do this. And it will be important that we are able to extend this work, um, perhaps in some of the range countries. Many of the range countries are actually in the 59 that signed um, their intent to use natural capital accounting alongside GDP uh, when we were in Rio. So um, without concluding, and even though he's gone, it's his last week in the job, and it would be remiss for me to not acknowledge that we wouldn't be here as a World Bank on this issue without the perseverance, determination and single-mindedness of our President Bob Zelik. Uh, my responsibility and my duty uh, in his absence after the 1st of July is to make sure that this institution is as good enough as it needs to be to keep that commitment going and you have my assurance that it will be. Thank you very much. Rachel, thank you very much. I'd like to recognize His Excellency, the USED here, Mr. Solomon. Thank you for coming. Uh, I must say that in Rio, one of the major results have been that 
our World Bank group has been positioned in the front line, in the frontiers of biodiversity conservation. And I'd like to convey uh, appreciation and thanks to Rachel for providing that leadership. May I now uh, request uh, Mr. Bruno Leport to provide the concluding remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Keshav. Um, I would like just to um, end, in fact, this, uh, this morning by thanking all of you, uh, the distinguished uh, members, uh, ambassadors, uh, ministers, uh, and, and the colleagues uh, from the bank that have joined us this morning. Um, but also I would like to uh, have a special thank and, and really congratulate the Tiger Ranch countries uh, for what they have been able to do in such a short amount of time. Um, this is truly amazing what has been happening in the last few years. Um, I would like also to welcome our new partners, Clemson University and also the Confederation of Indian Industry. We are very happy that this partnership is indeed uh, broadened uh, to very important organization that will really help us advance uh, this agenda. Um, as you heard from this morning, the, the Global Tiger Initiative uh, is of course about uh, saving tigers, but it has much broader implications uh, in terms of relevance and impact. Uh, it's not only about uh, biodiversity con conservation, but it is also about sustainable development and alleviating poverty. This is particularly interesting because in this fight that we are all uh, leading uh, to conserve tiger and other uh, leading species, it's all about partnerships. And it's all about this idea of broadening partnerships. And I think indeed the fact that we have the uh, private sector uh, that is, and the business council that we will be trying to promote in the future, I think this is particularly si significant. Industry and the private sector, and I think Rachel just uh, emphasized that, can and must play a pivotal, pivotal role in stimulating models of, for green growth, uh, especially in rural poor communities. So the private sector wants to be part of the solution, and it's looking for ways to help. I was also very happy that uh, Rachel just mentioned, coming from Rio, what happened in the last, uh, last week, because I think indeed there are some pretty significant developments uh, that have been taking place. And the fact that the bank has been promoting green growth and giving this message that green growth is not only affordable, but it's also necessary. Uh, and I, I believe this message has really resonated very uh, strongly in, in Rio. And the banks, multilateral development banks and the World Bank can indeed play a very important role and be effective forces for uh, delivering uh, on the needed shift to, to inclusive green growth. And indeed, I think the national accounting uh, uh, and the fact that so many countries and partners have signed on this uh, new approach to include the value of natural capital in, in uh, uh, national product is really uh, quite significant. So I, I also think that uh, GTI is an effective force. Uh, it is enhancing the World Bank's role in ensuring sustainable growth so that it reaches and benefits the poor, uh, people who remain dependent on forest and basic sustenance in remote corners of Asia, and the same remote areas that the tigers uh, in, inhabit. The other aspect of GTI is that it gives uh, its broad impact uh, uh, through knowledge partnerships and, and, and the, the communities that we have assembled here today and, and other people that have not been able to join us. No individual nation, national or organization has all the solution to saving the wild tigers, far less saving of, of our biodiversity. Instead, the GTI has created a platform for everyone in the Alliance to share their knowledge and experience and to develop a program with great promise to achieve the goal of doubling Tiger's numbers and changing much else in the process. I would like to conclude in uh, um, uh, noting that President Zelik has brought Tiger's front and center to the attention of all of us at the World Bank Group, but GTI has many other champions in the bank 
who deserves credit uh, with it and in helping change the way the bank operates. Not the least my colleague Kesha Varma and friend Kesha Varma. I can assure you that President Zelik legacy will be long lasting at the bank and will continue to support the GTI as all of you in your mission to recover wild tigers and make uh, and help create a green future for all of us. Thank you. Bruno, thank you very much. Before we disperse, there are one or two issues. One is there would be a, a bit of a media meet with the honorable ministers, and some of the members of the media would be interested in having a conversation. There would also be a filming a part of this, so there will be a few interviews. I would like you to leave with one single thought because it has always played in my mind. Even as a child when I used to see tigers entering where I lived uh, near Corbett National Park. And that is the sheer, sheer presence and the pull of the tiger. That's an animal which is sitting far away in the wilds of Asia can pull together such an amazing partnership and exercise influence on the minds and hearts of all of you. So I was once asked by Mr. Zelik, how could all this be mobilized? And I didn't know uh, any other answer than to say, perhaps every one of us who is here has a tiger in their heart. And GTI tries to unleash that or, or to express it. I believe heart believes in that also. So the, <laughs> thank you very much. No, we were, uh, thank you very much for coming and uh, attending this uh, uh, this event. Uh, of course, Mr. Zelik uh, would be moving on. He's busy. But I really celebrate the assurance uh, and the confidence uh, that Rachel's statement had made uh, for GTI, as well as from Karin and all our partners, and especially from the honorable ministers uh, who are here from three of the Tiger Range countries. Thank you very much. <laughs>